Hi, this is the media uh, video for 6.5. It's properties of logarithms. Uh, this is pretty much property and law driven uh, section, which basically means uh, that it's just using some basic properties, some laws, and change the base uh, formula to try to manipulate logarithm uh, expressions. And uh, so I've, I've got four examples here. And it's very limited, so in class we'll be doing a lot more examples than this. My board's just only so big here. And uh, so anyway, I went through here and I, uh, I listed the basic properties. And in the book, they kind of go here and there, but I kind of put them all together in one little section here. Uh, but the first property, the basic property, is the log base B of 1 equals 0. So when your base is B, remember B is greater than 0, not equal to 1. Uh, if, you, if the input is 1, the output is 0. And if you recall, that makes sense because that was the graphing. Uh, all logarithmic functions go through the point 1, 0. And the reason that's the case is because b is the base to the 0 equals 1 when you change it exponential form. And that's true. b to the 0 does equal 1. And the second one, log base b of b is 1. So if the input is the same as the base, the output is 1. And that makes sense as well because if you change it to exponential form, b to the first equals b. And that's actually true. So, so if the input of a log is the same as the base, the output is 1. Now the third basic property is log base b of b to the x. Now if that's the case, then the output is x. And again, change exponential form, b to the x equals b to the x, obviously true. Now the next one, I'm not going to do much uh, explanation why this is true on this little video clip. It's just take a little longer. But if you take b raised to log base b of x, that equals x. So it has to do with the uh, changing the exponential form to logarithmic form. And it's pretty obvious at that point. But this takes a little bit more space and a little bit more time. So I'm going to leave that as it is. Uh, then the laws of logarithms, if you take the log base b of m times n, that equals the log base b of m plus the log base b of n. That is actually called the product law, or some people call it the product rule. So, and then uh, log base b of m divided by n is equals to the log base b minus the log base n. And remember that n cannot be zero because you cannot divide by zero. And um, so uh, that's called the quotient law or the quotient rule. And the third one is called the power rule or the power law. Uh, the log base b of m to a power p, that's why I call it p for power. Well, the power can be written as a factor. So that p can be actually written out front. So that would be p times the log base b of m. So that's called the power law. And um, so anyway, these are the basic properties and these are the laws of logarithms. And then toward the end of this section, we talk, they talk about the change in base formula. And I was kind of in limbo whether I should show you this or not, because you can get by this course without actually even knowing this, uh, because there's other means of solving the equation. But I found that this is probably a, a formula worth talking about, because it does make some problems a little bit simpler to do, even though it's not uh, necessary for everything. Uh, it does work and uh, makes things a little nicer at some point. So, but what it says, if you take the log base b of m equals log base a of m divided by the log base a of b. Okay, so now even though a and b is greater than 0 and a and b not equal to 1, now what you're going to find that you're going to take the log base b of m and b could be like 2 and 3 and your calculator doesn't, uh, cannot calculate for log base uh, 2 and log base 3. Um, the only one that it can use is the log base 10 and the natural log. So even though base A can be any number greater than 0 like 1, we're going to let it be the natural log or the common log. So because the calculator can actually do that. And when we get to example 4 down here, I'll show what I'm talking about. And I'll, I will prove this in class. It's probably about three or four step process. But this will be proven in class, and I'll show you how that kind of works. Then the notes. Uh, there's, there's a couple notes that I wanted to show you that uh, often made mistakes by students. Uh, they take the log base b of m times the log base b of n. That does not equal the log base b of m times n. So in other words, the log of a product does not equal the, log, the product of the logs. And the same thing here. The, the log of a quotient does not equal to the quotient of the logs. 
so that people get these mixed up all the time with these two over here. So, okay. So these are some basic properties and some pitfalls that students make. Okay, so example one, what we're going to do, I didn't put all the instructions down to save a little space, so, but I remember what the instructions are, so I'll tell you what they are. Example one, what we're trying to do is we're going to use the basic properties and the laws to actually calculate this without a calculator. So, so the log base 3 of 18 minus the log base 3 of 2, that is subtracting two logs that have the same base. So if you kind of come over here, where did I see that? Well, you saw it down here. The log minus a log, okay, that is equals to the log of the quotient, okay. So what we do with that is that is going to equal to log base three of eighteen divided by two, because subtracting two logs is the log of the quotient quotient rule quotient law. That is equals to the log base three of nine, because eighteen divided by two is nine. Now log base two of uh, log base three of nine actually can be calculated as well. 9 is the same thing as 3 squared, so that's going to be log base 3 of 3 squared because that's 9. So if you come over here and look at prop the, one of the basic properties, if you take the log base b of b to the x, that is equals to x. So in this case, the, base, uh, the bases are both 3, so the output finally will be the, uh, the exponent, which is 2. So it's kind of weird to see all these two numbers, and it just boils down to the number two. So, uh, so you're basically going from expanded form to, to its most simplistic form. Now, yeah, well, what would have happened if this number wasn't nine? What if that number was like seven? What happens when you divide eighteen divided by two and it wasn't wasn't a, a power of three? Well, then you're done, unless you want to use a decimal, and then you have to use something else. So, log base three of nine, though nine is three squared. I can make the bases the same. But if that was a number that it was not a power of 3, then I need something else to do that with. But the basic property sufficed. Now, example 2, what we're going to do here is right now it's in compact form. And we want to expand this out as much as we can using the basic properties and the laws of logarithms. Okay? So the first thing I see that is I have is a product, x times the square root of x plus 3. So I'm going to use the product law here. I'm going to expand it out. So this is going to be the natural log of x plus the natural log of the square root of x squared plus 3. Okay? Now, this one right here, I can't really do much anything else with the natural log of x, but this natural log of the square root of x squared plus 3, well, at first glance, it looks like I'm done with this one as well because you can't do nothing with that. But you can because the square root is really x squared plus 3. 3 to the 1 half power. And there we go. There goes your power law, power rule. So the 1 half can be written as a factor down here. Remember, when you have a power, the power can be written as a factor. So the 1 half can be brought down in front of that law. Not in front of this one, but in front of this one. The natural log of x out front is done. Okay, so this is going to be the natural log of x plus 1 half times the natural log of x squared plus 3. Now, I put this problem down on purpose because people will see this x squared plus 3 and they want to do something with this square here because I think of the, the, there's another power rule again. But the problem with it is this plus 3. x squared plus 3 is a uh, expansion by a plus. There is no such thing as a plus rule of all groups. There is a product rule and a quotient rule. So when you get an expansion like x squared plus 3, it's done. You can't do anything with that. So in actuality, this is all you can do. You cannot break up the natural log of x squared plus uh, 3 in this case. So now the next example is a uh, same thing as example 2, but in reverse. So it's already expanded, and then you're going to put it back together. So this is kind of like when your tenth is already out, and then you're going to fold it all back up. So this is the idea. It's just kind of doing everything in reverse. So here, the tent was already put together, and you just laid your tent out, expanded everything out. This one's already expanded out. Put things back up. So the one half has got to go back up here. So the first step would be to write, well, I'm a little bit out of room here. Let's see. There we go. So we have the log of 2x plus 5 to the one half power. 
minus the log of x squared plus 6. Now remember x squared plus 6, you can't really do much with that. Okay, but the 1 half is kind of like the 1 half here, so it was the square root of that. So this is going to be the log of the square root of 2x plus 5 minus the log of x squared plus 6. So we're not quite, the tent's not quite folded up yet because the log of x squared plus 5 minus the log of x squared plus 6, even though you can't do anything with the x squared plus 6, now you can't do anything else with that either. You're trying to put everything together. Remember, when you're subtracting two logs, that is equal to the log of the quotient. So this will be the log of the quotient, 2x plus 5 square root of that, over x squared plus 6. And now the tens all put back together. So, so this is when it's put together. This is when you expand it out. This one's expanded out and we'll put it back together. So uh, they both have their uses. Probably this more so than this one, but they both have their uses. So now this last one is using the change of base formula. Now two, log base 2 of 14, we want to calculate that using the change of base formula. So the log base 2 of 14, now base 2, most calculators don't have base 2. Some of, some of the TI-36X Pro, I think they have one that you can change the base into anything you want. But most scientific calculators do not have base 2 or base anything else besides natural log and a common log, base 10. And uh, so you really can't do this on the calculator as it stands. And like I did, not we'll show you in class is how this comes about. But what we're going to do is we're going to calculate this by the natural log of 14 divided by the natural log of 2. Because you can change the base to anything else. And remember, natural log is base E. But you could also, if you wanted to, do a common log of 14 divided by the common log of 2. Remember, no, no base down there is understood to be base 10, common log. Now, I'm not saying that the natural log of 14 and common log of 14 is the same thing. And I'm not saying the natural log of 2 divided by is the same thing as the common log of 2. But their ratios are the same. So it's like saying uh, 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 2 divided by 4. Okay, it's one half. Four divided by eight is one half, but the numerators are not the same. Two and two is not equal to four, and, and four is not equal to eight. But the ratios are the same thing. That's kind of the analogy I like to use here. So now what you will need to do is since these are on the calculator, you can get these out and calculate that. And so natural log of two uh, 14 divided by the natural log of 2, and I get 3.807, uh, and it rounds up to 4, 3.8074. That is the, this as a decimal. And when people see this, they're like, okay, but what's that number really mean? So, I mean, they don't really understand what this number really implies. How does how it has no meaning to them is what I'm saying. Because the natural log of 2 to 14 for most people don't mean anything to them. So let me show you real quick what it means. If you take the log base 2 of 14, what you're seeing is the the uh, the, ex the exponents when you change this. So um, 2 to the x equals 14. So log base 2 of 14 is just the exponent of this equation right here. 2 to the x equals 14. So this number right here is what this number would have to be in order for it to be 14. So you're right. It's going to be 2 raised to the 3.8074 approximately. Now you won't get exactly 14, but you'll get really close to 14. You're like, why not exactly? Well, because we rounded that number. And when you round that number, you'll get close to 14, but not quite. If you ran all the numbers out to all 8 to 12 decimal places where your calculator gives you, it probably be pretty right at pretty much 14, or if it's not, it's like 13.999999. So, but anyway, this is 6.5. It's a it's very uh, simple section if you can follow the properties. The biggest problem students have with this one is following in these pitfalls here. Um, when you're trying to evaluate these things or simplify them, expand them out, it's misuse of the properties in the law. That's the biggest thing. If you misuse them, you're going to mess them up. So. 
it's not the actual calculations for the most part here. It's they see something, students will see this, and they want to write it this way right here. And if you don't use the property right, it's like using the quadratic formula. If you, if, you, uh, if you misuse the quadratic formula, if you don't put the numbers in the right place or the, the quadratic formula is uh, wrong to begin with, everything you do from here on out is wrong as well. So that's why you got to know the properties, you got to know the laws, and you change the base formula. You, uh, we're going to find out later that you don't really have to have it, but it is kind of nice to do certain types of problems. So, but anyway, that's 6.5.